So on a day where half of the east coast of North America was snowed in with one of the biggest snowstorms of the last couple of years, we found out two things in the AFC and NFC title games on, the, on Sunday, January 20th. Tom Brady is still God and the football gods must hate Sean Payton. First, let's talk about the, the great effort by the Patriots in outlasting uh, Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs 37-31 in overtime on the road of all things uh, in probably one of the most interesting playoff games since the San Diego uh, Miami game that went in overtime when uh, Dan Fouts led them to victory. This was the most exciting I think uh, NFL playoff game I've ever seen even though I'm not fans of the Patriots or Chiefs. Uh, Tom Brady was Roger Staubach-esque in this game. Uh, the big problem with this contest for Kansas City were playing catch up for most of the match uh, they were behind uh, 14 to nothing at the half. Now the Chiefs under Mahomes are a growing squad, but the only uh, I think had one first down in the first I don't know 28 minutes, 29 minutes, close to it, or significant first down. By the second half, uh, the Chiefs were playing again catch up, but Brady was uh, every time the Chiefs would score, Brady would come back with something. Now the the fourth quarter, uh, which led to overtime. The Patriots uh, dodged two bullets in the fourth quarter. Uh, Edelman uh, allegedly didn't touch a uh, kickoff, a punt uh, return, and the ball kept with uh, the Patriots. And then Brady, unfortunately, threw an interception, which led to uh, a mini Kansas City comeback. Brady uh, got the ball back, uh, drove down for almost was going to be the winning touchdown. But then Kansas City uh, rebounded to, to kick an overtime field goal. But, of course, Brady being Brady, Got the ball in overtime and uh, never made a mistake. Uh, Gronkowski made some get big catches. Gronkowski's always there for Brady when he needs him, sort of like Jason Witten with Dallas. And uh, let me tell you, it was very exciting to see such uh, a veteran team like the Patriots being led by the young players as well on the team because the runners, Michelle and Burkhead, are, are, are uh, great uh, players out of college. They're starting to develop as players. And, uh, you know, it was the Patriots running game that really saved them because they almost had 200 uh, yards on the ground, four touchdowns. It was basically uh, a cold weather game, throwback to the old, you know, NFC East context, uh, contests of back in the day. But uh, let me tell you, uh, seeing, uh, seeing the way Patri the Patriots came down the field under Brady, now this is going to be uh, a record because that's the third straight Super Bowl that uh, Brady and the Patriots have gone to. And this is probably the most significant because a lot of people saying this year that Brady was done, he was going to retire, blah, blah, blah. The only person that can stop Tom Brady is Tom Brady. Uh, Tom Brady has always been there for whatever teammates he's had. Now in the drive, which is uh, very, very significant and again, very, you know, Terry Bradshaw, Staubach, Jim Kelly-esque. On the drive, he had three third down uh, conversions, which is kind of similar to what he did at Atlanta at the uh, Super Bowl uh, to go to overtime a couple of years ago. Brady knows how to work an offense, to tire a defense, and to use third down to his advantage, not to his disadvantage. Uh, but Brady, after the game, had all the credit for uh, uh, the young Kansas City team, probably one of the best young teams uh, assembled in the AFC in years. And uh, they will be back. Kansas City impressed me, although, uh, you know, they're inexperienced. The first half, they were just growing pain. Second half, they really showed their offense. But you see, the Patriots, uh, sometimes their defense is not there. I know it's hard to say that uh, the Patriots are only an offensive team, but there is occasions where, you know, they need to improve. But with Brady, I mean, you can give up 31 points like they did uh, against Kansas City. And uh, But tell, tell you something, Burkhead there, he's, he's a comer, that guy. He... Uh, he uh, sort of like a, an EFC uh, running back throwback to the 1980s. He knows how to protect the ball. He knows where the end zone is. And um, uh, Belichick with the victory has, get this, passed Bill Walsh and Don Shula combined for most postseason victories. Can you imagine that? As good as Bill Walsh and Shula were, Belichick has now 30. Um, and he's looking to break their record, or their uh, dual record, because uh, Shula, uh, Shula and Bill Walsh have five, and Belichick is looking for number six. So uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting, too. But 
getting to the their opponents, they're going to be playing the uh, L.A. Rams uh, in the uh, the Super Bowl in two weeks. Now they shouldn't be playing the Rams, uh, and I tell you why. The uh, New Orleans Saints, who were at home in the contest, uh, led quite early and dominated most of the game. They had uh, uh, 13 nothing in the first quarter until the Rams made a, a slow comeback. But as the Saints were uh, driving to uh, clinch the game, uh, they suffered from the worst blown call in the history of the NFL. How this was not a double penalty for pass interference, helmet helmet contact, I don't know if it was a Terry Gregson, Don Koharski style referee gaffe, but this will be studied, analyzed, it will go down in history as nauseating how bad the non-call was. Now, Nikhil uh, Roby Coleman, very good young cornerback, uh, he committed you know, a blatant interference penalty with a helmet to helmet hit on the Rams, uh, Tommy Lee Lewis. Now, uh, according to my timing, he hit him about two and a half seconds even before the ball arrived, and that's an automatic uh, pass interference penalty. It was third down on the play, and uh, they had to settle for a go ahead uh, field goal by uh, Will Lutz, and they made it 23 uh, 20 with 141 left in regulation. Now, the Rams got the ball back, they tied it, um, and uh, it was. It was, you knew something bad was going to happen in overtime, and it did happen to the Saints. Um, when uh, <laughs> when he lost the uh, coin toss and uh, uh, Breeze uh, threw an interception, I mean, the Rams lost a coin toss and uh, the Saints got the ball, but with Drew Pass, Drew Breeze's pass uh, kind of fluttered on a deflection. It was intercepted by John Johnson the third. Um, it was. <laughs> You knew something bad was going to happen. And uh, when Zerline hit the, the winning field goal, uh, basically the whole of the air went out of uh, the Saints fans in attendance. And uh, they were almost riotous uh, in overtime as well. They were very pissed off. Um, and like, like I said, when Sean Payton basically said, I'll never get over this. And if you're a football fan with something like that, it happens awfully you'll get over it personally, but if you're fans of the Saints, you'll never get over this. You'll be repeating this for years, not say it's comparable to Jackie Smith or dropping in zone or, you know, the immaculate reception, that's, that's bad enough. But this was bad. If the Saints were at the level of popularity, like the Giants, like the Patriots, like Dallas, like San Francisco, there would be effigies burned today of that referee who didn't make the call and the player for the Rams who, who made the... Uh, the bad play as we say um what's great about the rams though sean McAvee, a good young up-and-coming coach um only 32 will be uh, with the victory allowed the rams to go into super bowl since the 2001 se season when uh, the rams under uh, warner had the greatest show on turf so super bowl no predictions yet i'm going to do that in future podcasts i think the patriots and rams got to take a breather take a breather ha <sighs> and uh, get this out of their system because, you know, seven or eight hours of football for a journalist to watch it and give you a podcast is bad enough. Could imagine if you're there and allowed to live through it. Um, now, the Saints have been hard luck in recent years, and uh, uh, especially after last year, the Minnesota Miracle. But, you know, the Saints will come back. Now, the Saints had lost to Dallas in the regular season. Saints had, uh, you know, had a mediocre end of the year. I think he peaked too early. The Rams peaked late, uh, you know, beating Dallas in a ball control victory uh, just a week before. There is easily a possibility that it would be a Dallas Patriots Super Bowl because you could pick them between the Rams, Saints, and Dallas, who's going to make it. But I basically think the Rams, if they have to beat the Patriots, they have to be strong in that third quarter because that's a quarter that sometimes teams forget to give them enough momentum to finish off an opposing team. But the third quarter is going to be key in the Super Bowl. Like I really know, whoever wins the third quarter in the Super Bowl will win the third. Will win the Super Bowl. To say it uh, simply. So, ladies and gentlemen, on this cold, frigid Monday, uh, I must say congratulations to all four of the finalists. Uh, some of the some of the best playoff uh, contests in NFL history, uh, all in one day. But the odds of two uh, title games going in overtime in the NFL in the same year are astronomical. So if there's somebody out there who played in Vegas that both games uh, went overtime, 
I'll see you in Barbuda next week because I know probably you'll do a ride remote and said here I need just my million dollars because I bet on the two overtime games and I picked the Rams and the Patriots so I'm never seeing you guys again in North America because it's too cold just like the game on the weekend so again keep your stick on the ice have a great day and uh, Patriots Nation in Maine uh, if you're listening to this you might be getting another Super Bowl because it's it's a good possibility that the Rams will not repeat the success at the Saints that the uh, that he will try to do against the Patriots. Okay, have a good one. Bye.